Welcome to another edition of Hey Bobby with the Vice President of the Cleveland Indians, Bobby DiBiasio here on WAKR, brought to you by Nika IBEW. Bobby, I thought we'd start out this week going on the field a little bit. You and I talk a lot about all the other things that are really in the encompasses Cleveland Indians baseball a lot from history to so many other aspects. But on the field, and I've been talking about this on the radio, I really like the seeds that have been planted for our starting rotation going forward. When you look at Bieber, Savali, and Plesak who are in place, and then you add in the development of McKenzie that we have seen in the last couple of months, and this guy, the bulldog, I'm calling him, the new bulldog, Cal Quantrill, and I love what this guy is doing on the mound. Like I said, you don't know how things play out. But going forward for the rest of 21 and into 2022, I like those five names in our starting rotation. Oh, absolutely. I think one of the, uh, or probably the number one positive that we can take out of the 2021 season, as it looks as if we may not be in a position to play October baseball, um, has been the norm for us uh, the previous eight season as, as we've been in the postseason five times in the last eight seasons. Um, so the biggest takeaway is the fact that our starting rotation depth is back. And that's been the strength of this baseball team the last eight years is the fact that we can have some injuries here and there with some starting pitching, but we're able to bring some people up that um, can get the job done. Um, we weren't we we weren't really in the position to say that as we went into the 2021 season. We weren't sure what our depth was going to be like. Um, so that was uncharted territory for us. But after watching Eli Morgan and Tristan McKenzie and Cal Quantrill and even Sam Hentges, uh, um, J.C. Mahir, those the latter two you know, big, strong guys that uh, you just don't know when it's going to click for them uh, or if they could be bullpen pieces because they certainly can throw hard. And especially Sam with the breaking ball from the left-handed side, uh, you know, who knows if, if he's a guy that really can get it done for an inning or two out of the bullpen for you. But you take Morgan and McKenzie and Quantrill and you add them to Shane Bieber, Savale, Zach Plezak, um, again, all of a sudden, our pitching depth is where we want it to be. A couple names um, to think about. Cody Morris, right-handed pitcher, another 6'4", 225, 30-pound guy uh, at AAA, pitching pretty darn well. Um, so fans of, you know, our minor leagues, go Google him, check him out. Uh, his stats are pretty darn good. A uh, couple. Um, Draft picks are guys we acquired in trades, uh, Peyton Battenfield, Gavin Williams, Daniel Espino, a young guy, number one draft pick a couple of years ago, really coming on. Uh, he's a strikeout machine. So there's some guys coming as well. And uh, so we feel real good about um, that starting rotation depth. Um, so it makes us feel real comfortable as we move into 2022. I agree. And you mentioned young guys and this past Sunday night the Indians had a chance to play in the Major League Baseball Little League Showcase which I thought was real special by the way I love those uniforms yeah well. me too <laughs> that game. but you know I thought for a moment we could talk about what the Indians do for youth baseball I don't know if we've talked a lot about that between League Park and certainly the dedication of the organization to youth sports and in particular youth baseball well our connection, obviously, to youth baseball, specifically the Cleveland Baseball Federation, uh, goes back to the 1940s, um, how the, this franchise has um, worked hard to foster uh, the game of baseball and all the wonderful things that comes with the game of baseball and sports, uh, the life lessons that young people learn by participating in team sports, you know, how to cooperate with a teammate, what it means to be a good teammate, what it means to show up at practice on time for the discipline and commitment and dedication, uh, a healthy sense of competition, um, all the things uh, that are involved uh, 
you know, a sense of sportsmanship, uh, all the wonderful things that are involved in when, when you get involved in, in team sports. And over the years, you know, our commitment has changed when we've heard back from the various uh, leagues uh, and rec centers as to where we need to position our dollars, our resources, our people. And right now we have a play ball CLE program um, that really um, speaks to both the uh, youth baseball and youth softball programs in Northeast Ohio. Um, we've created with the RBI program, uh, reviving baseball in the inner cities that We've switched that to become like an elite travel team almost to give kids a real, um, a specific group of both boys and girls softball an opportunity to, to really dive into their sport and travel together and be in hotels and go to a couple tournaments and um, just live life that they normally wouldn't be um, privy to. So. Um, it really uh, is an interesting transformation with that program that we tried to service as many as possible. And then with RBI, we really focused in on what, how we can really impact some specific uh, young athletes. Probably about four to 5,000 youngsters are being um, assisted in our little league programs. And as you know, through Indians Charities, the um, Cleveland Metropolitan School District uh, boys baseball girls softball programs they do not happen without Indi Cleveland Indians charities we 100% fully fund the baseball and softball programs for the city of Cleveland and uh, our commitment run deep runs deep not only field renovations resources coaches coaching seminars you name it we do it we believe in it and it's something that we are very proud of. Yeah, and you should, and we're talking with Bobby DiBiasio. Hey, Bobby, uh, brought to you by uh, Nika IBEW. And you may have touched on it, but League Park is something that you guys jumped in with both feet years ago and uh, headed up that renovation project. And I know I'm being there with a travel baseball league one time. The kids walking through those gates, just blown away to get their feet on that park. Yeah, such a historic facility with the Baseball Heritage Museum there. You know, we, you really hope that when a travel team does go to League Park that, you know, they take the extra time to go through the Baseball Heritage Museum to understand the true history of that uh, ballpark. It, it actually is the only uh, old ballpark in America that is still standing and utilized for baseball. You know, the Polo Grounds, uh, Ebbets Field, Forbes Field, Sportsman's Park, uh, Scheib Field, you name it. They're all gone. They're all gone. And uh, League Park's the only one standing, and it's still being utilized uh, to, for the game of baseball with the Baseball Heritage Museum attached to it. Uh, it's a wonderful area, E66 Lexington Avenue. Um, you should Google it if you ever want to go by and just visit the, the Baseball Heritage Museum. That's a, a fun thing um, as well. So, uh, but we just dedicated a field to CC Sabathia. You know, our third field turf uh, facility in Northeast Ohio at the All-Star Game, we did the Jim Tomey um, project at Brookside Park, a beautiful field turf. Uh, ball diamond uh, at Brookside. We have League Park as a field turf at the All-Star Legacy Project uh, in 2019. Luke Easter Park, which you drive in on Larry Doby Way to get to Luke Easter Park and the field dedication for CC. Uh, it's now the CC Sabathia Field at Luke Easter Park. Just a wonderful day. You know, he's such a big man with an even bigger heart. Him and Tristan McKenzie interacting with those kids. Uh, it was really a fun, fun day, Ray. Bobby DiBiasio with us, VP of the Cleveland Indians. Hey, Bobby, brought to you by Nika IBEW. Bobby, you and I came up in the same era with Little League Baseball. I know me, I couldn't wait on my old uniform 
with the four buttons in the front to to get the little league patch on my shoulder. That meant you were something. And away from the Indians for a moment, because you have such great insight to the game of baseball and spending some time this week talking about youth baseball. And you mentioned travel leagues, and my son played a whole slew of <laughs> travel leagues. But I've noticed that little league baseball is down over 12% participation in the last 10 years. A lot of it with the kids going directly to travel baseball, which is good in its own right, don't get me wrong, but Little League, and we just took part in that spectacular game on Sunday night, seems to almost be a thing of the past in many communities. Well, it's an interesting dynamic with that, Ray. Um, one of the last things I read is if you combine youth baseball with youth softball, so combine the general game of baseball and softball. There are more young people in America today playing baseball and softball than any other youth sport if you combine the two. And I think you should combine the two because you do have co-ed soccer and you have you know, other co-ed sports. So baseball and softball are the same thing in a sense. And uh, um, so... The participation level is, is wonderful, but at the Little League rec level, yes, because there's such more, more opportunity for kids to learn the game at all these little sports academies and people more involved in the coaching and teaching. And that's one thing that we really uh, jumped in on, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, is, you know, a good coach who knows his stuff or she knows her stuff, right attitude can be one of the more uh, incredible influences on somebody's life. And on the reverse, somebody who really doesn't know what they're doing, they're just trying to be nice as a parent, but they just don't know the skill set, uh, could also be on the negative side. So we actually um, hold seminars for coaches um, to help people who just want to do good and want to participate and be a part of that um, scenario, but they just don't have the skill set. And so we teach them how to run a practice and we teach them the important things um, of staying positive and, and being a role model. So that's important. So um, I think one of them, I'm not sure if it was Austin Hedges, one of our players, when they went and watched the Little League, World Series and these guys these were guys that were part of the Little League um, World Series they said man these guys are much better than we were at that age because they're getting more repetitions they're getting more tutelage they're in these um, you know at every corner you know you see the indoor batting cages and you see these kids are while they may not I know it's weird for our age you know you'll drive by a ball diamond in the summertime and it's empty and we all say, man, we would have ridden our bike and been on that field all day long. Well, it's a different world. And it doesn't mean kids aren't playing the game. They're just playing it in a different way. And they're in these indoor batting cages and getting all the, um, the lessons taught in that way instead of you and I, you know, just riding up on our bike you know, with our bat and glove on the handlebars and, and playing game all day. So it's a different mindset. That doesn't mean kids don't like the game or aren't playing it. It's just a different way that people are going about it. And I agree that, and society changed. How many parents are truly willing to let their young one get on a bike and ride two, three miles to a local park? It, a different you and I we left the house at 8 a.m and we didn't come back till dinner time and that was cool and that's the way it was but that's just not the way unfortunately the world works today but I think the game of baseball is incredibly strong with little leaguers I thought the story I don't know if you saw it Ray the story with Austin Hedges his 12 and under youth team in California there's seven guys that made the big leagues on that team his 12 and his dad was the coach guys like Bryce Harper uh, were on that team. He'd come in from Vegas on the weekend to California to play in the tournaments at 12 and under. And Austin Hedges was saying the first time he stepped foot and 
hitting the ball as far as he did. We're all like, is he really 12 years old? <laughs> He's the same age as us. Joe Musgrove, who threw a no hitter for the Padres this year, was on that team. There are seven kids in that California 12 and under team that made it to the big league. To me, that's just unbelievable. But baseball is strong. Softball is strong. The key element to it all, we believe, is just having the right coaches with the right mindset, the right approach, making it fun for kids, uh, because it is a very difficult game uh, to learn, especially, you know, get the 12 year old that's a foot taller than everybody throws much harder. <laughs> you know, he's not easy to stand in the batter's box against that. You got to learn to handle those fears. But it's a. Uh, I still think uh, one of the greatest uh, games ever created and, and the kids are having fun with it for sure. And I know our players had a blast interacting with the little leaguers in Williamsport, such a wonderful thing. Baseball does. I agree with you a hundred percent and growing up with my kid, going away to those tournaments on the weekends, uh, great memories for sure. Bobby, to wrap up the show this week, I've had a lot of people sending me text messages in the morning because they, watch our show each and every week and they say hey can you ask bobby when the branding when the imaging when the guardians gear will be available i said i don't know if he knows but i will give him the question this week and a lot of people clamoring for it my friend well that's good to hear i wish i had a definitive answer for um those that are interested in in grabbing that guardians gear just like the rest of us we want to uh check it out and, and grab it uh it's not going to be like the moment, the third out of the final game of the 2021 season. And then all of a sudden, you know, we shift it um, is going to take a little bit of time. So sometime in the off season um, before the holidays, of course, um, we will uh, make that announcement um, official that we've, this is the day that we officially become the Cleveland Guardians, and therefore you can grab the T-shirts the and the jerseys and the hats and all the fun stuff. Uh, we're not quite there uh, yet to, to announce that. So, uh, But believe me, when we are, everyone will hear about it. That sounds good. Hey, Bobby. Bobby DiBiasio. He joins us each week on WAKR, our Facebook page, YouTube channel wakr.net brought to you by nika ibew my friend thanks for the visit again and we'll reconvene next week you got it we got a big slate of home games coming up go drive <laughs>